you know, uh, wells or the, you know, specific things that are specific to the farm production itself, okay, then that's where, that's where Black Oaks Graph P program can assist you. And to present all that information in more detail will be Dr. Jafunza. And remember, uh, Barbara, Barbara Fred, he spoke earlier with you all earlier this year. So this is his other hand, his better hand, <laughs> hand. this is Dr. Jafunza. So if everybody can give her a round of applause for joining us today and give her your attention. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. There's a lot of people in the room that I know um, and admire. Um, but for those of you who don't know who I am, I am actually a holistic physician who uses food as medicine. And that's how I backed into farming. So um, we, uh, in 2011, for the first time in over 10 years, we were able to bring the USDA back into Pembroke for, for the first time in a very long time. And the mission was always to be able to bring resources so that everyone can really begin to use farming as an economic stability, not only for themselves, but for Pembroke and wherever you live. <laughs> and so, we were fortunate enough, it was in 2011 that I looked into the eyes of the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders and I stayed up for 72 hours and I wrote the beginning farm and rancher grant. Not because I wanted a salary, not because uh, I wanted to uh, just have some money. I wrote it because I wanted our community to have the resources that it needs. Because if we're going to do local food system development, we got to have people to grow the food. And if we're going to have people to grow the food, then they got to have the support that they need to grow the food. And so we were fortunate enough in 2012 to receive this award. And in the first year of the award, we did things pretty much like you all are doing in here. We had classes every week. We had classes two or three times a week. And people had assignments. And uh, we actually got out in the field and did things hands on. What it is that I'm clear about today is that the best way to utilize the resources is not only for both of our programs to work together, because they're both USDA programs. The beginning farmer ranch is from the National Institutes of Food and Agriculture. And the grant for the whole farm technical assistance training came from rural development. So it's important that we utilize both farmer training programs to support everyone where they're at and getting where they want to go. So all of you have made farm business plans, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone? So everyone's kind of clear and really clear about what their plan is. How many people feel like they need support? How many people still need to be clearer? <laughs> OK, I like your honesty. I like your honesty. How many people feel like they need support to really actualize their plan? OK, like that honestly. And so the key, to the commitment that we are is that once you complete the program, you're not trying to figure it out or give somebody a call. We actually have a plan to fulfill the plan. OK? So what we have been doing is something we call rotating apprenticeships. And so that's literally like hands-on learning. So with hands-on learning, you, you know, you can go online, you can read, but there's nothing like actually doing what it is that you're going to need to master. So um, for instance, can someone just tell me what, what's in your business plan and what you want to do? Maybe you can tell me. Well, I wasn't going to do like eat vegetables and things, but then I realized I didn't know what to do after they broke. <laughs> so I didn't have an argument or packing or something. Okay. So it didn't turn out to be a lot of work. You know, so I said, okay, well, maybe that's not a basic new plan. So here we have a gentleman who's apparently green thumb gifted. Yeah. Um, was like, okay, I'm going to do leafy vegetables. I've never done, I guess I've never did them before. Yeah, not at that scale. Right, right, not at that scale. So he had lots of leafy greens, needed a market, needed a process. So his farm 
in the rotating apprenticeship would be where our trainees and the whole community can come and learn how to do gap certification. So the class that Carolyn gave us, we would actually put that information to work and how to clean the bunches, how to package them. And if you need in markets, then we help to facilitate you in finding markets. Okay? So if, with that experience, you might feel differently about growing a lot of these things. <laughs> so that's an example. Um, anybody else? Anybody else want to share what it is that they're going to be doing or they want to do? What about weeding? I know a lot of farmers have issues with weeding. Okay. Getting weeds out of their produce so it can grow. Okay, yeah, we definitely have a lot of issues with weeds and the rain. So, it, with weeds, has anybody had any good luck or a technique that's really worked for them? We talked about um, putting a lot of straw around, you know, heavy mulching around the plants themselves. That keeps the weeds down, keeps the moisture in, and then, you know, so that you don't have to compete so much with the weeds. Or putting cardboard in between your rows. You put cardboard in between rolls. Cardboard you can get free at Menards and Home Depot. They you know, all these box, big box stores throw cardboard out like it's like you know, like it's old rainwater just throw it out continuously. You can get those, pull them, pull them in strong and long, um, slender, just tear them in long, slender, you know, uh, pallets for yourself. You put those in between your rolls, and that that'll keep down a lot of weeds in between the rows, and it'll mulch down. You know, at, uh, at fall, spring, just keep 
putting in cover, cover crops. But that way you're having the benefit of you're having moisture retention, you're having nutrients that are being held there, you're having weed prevention, uh, you're building up your soil, and literally, if you like, then when it comes the next year, then you can literally reverse. So your walkway becomes your road where you're growing and the place where you grew, now it rests for that year and it becomes the green manure walkway. Yes? Will you, uh, for, we never used the term green manure, I know what it is, but will you explain to the class what green manure is? Okay, okay. So, in, here in Pembroke, for those, how many people have land here in Pembroke? Pretty much everybody? Okay, so you know we got the sandy soil. And the goal is to turn that sandy soil into black, into loam, into a sandy loam. And one of the ways that we can do that so that the nutrients and moisture is held in and we can really grow and our fertility is high is to use cover crops. So like you'll hear a lot of folks, you hear the elders talk about putting in rye, winter rye in the fall. You know, so that, that, that rye, it goes in, you know, and it makes it through the winter, it comes up in the spring. Okay, and oftentimes people want to cut it before it even starts to seed. And now all of that organic matter that's in that cover crop is now being tilled into the soil. Because for most of us, we have very, very porous soil, and what we need to get to that loam is more organic matter. And one of the simplest ways to do that is cover cropping. So green manures are cover crops. So green manures Nothing are new. cover crops. Absolutely. So we use rye. I, mean, I just talked about teff. The spring you can use oats uh, for the, um, the soil fertility research um, project. Buckwheat was used. Um, we've used millet. You know, so there's a whole range of cover crops that can be used at different times of the year that help with different things. And, Part of our mastery will be how, how best to use the cover crops. The clover, um, again, these are nitrogen fixers, so they're going to help to improve soil fertility, the amount of nitrogen that's in, in the soil. So the nice part about us being able to be here for you, and, the, and congratulations to everyone. I really uh, commend uh, Jahari and Kamal. Um, and Louise. Louise, that's who I was looking for, Louise, uh, everybody who um, did just an outstanding job of administering this program. And um, what it is that we're committed to is everybody being able to fulfill their plan, may find out that they want a different plan, <laughs> implement that plan, um, because at the end of the day, it's not just get the money. As we know, it's not, this is a very difficult, challenging career. And I can tell you from the tours, we have another tour to a dairy farm tomorrow. If anybody just doesn't have anything to do and they want, they're interested in dairy, we'll be going down to Chatsworth, uh, Illinois, tomorrow morning. And, uh, we'll be leaving out at 9 o'clock from here. Um, but literally, every single successful farm that we've been going to outside of our community. Uh, and I define success as a person who's able to farm full time because that's what they want to do. And they're actually able to make a living doing it. So their needs are being met and they got a little extra. Not like they're big time, you know, flowing in money, but they're, they're happy. They're happy with what they're doing and their needs are being met. That's a successful farm to me. Um, and all that goes into it. But everyone that we speak to, seven, eight, nine years going at it consistently. Okay? So like in May, for those of who went with us, we went to Deer Creek Farms. It's a wholesale, strictly wholesale, 80 acre organic, certified organic farm. And you may even see some of their, their things. They do carrots and leeks. They did uh, rainbow carrots for the first time were introduced to Chicago through Deer Creek Organics. And it's right there in St. Anne's. Uh, that
that man has been working consistently on his farm techniques and perfecting them for seven years. He had his family supporting him, his church supporting him, you know, financial support from, not all of us got it like that. But we do have each other. All we have is each other. And I'm confident that if we all give, do our best and support each other, that we can be far and far beyond where we are right now. So that's, our, that's the commitment, that's the bottom line at the end of the day. No, I'm not a super duper knowledgeable person about farming. What I am is passionate about and making a difference for our community. In the state of Illinois alone, we spend $60 billion on food. And 90 plus percent of that comes from outside of the state of Illinois. Just even if all of us decided we were going to band together and begin the process of creating a food system where we're producing the food for our community, we would be the agents of millions of dollars being retained in our community, stretched from here on into Chicago and beyond, on into the region. Illinois, Michigan, and Indiana. That's what's possible with all of us. And we need to be able to have black, successful farms. We need to be able to come to Taylor Farms, where aronia berries are growing, and children from elementary school, from high school, uh, uh, undergraduate students, too. Teenagers and 20-year-olds uh, don't know what they want to do. They get to come there and learn about berries and learn about whatever else is going on there. And that can transform their life. We need to be able to have the Rehoboth Blueberry Patch be this aspiration that, okay, I want, I want our blueberries to be like Rehoboth's right there. And we're looking at you about how do you use blueberries and, and from, from the time you prune them in the wintertime to, you know, putting them away and for retail and wholesale, freezing, dry, freeze dried, whatever you do. But you all are actually the models of success for our children. And so it's very important that all efforts, all energy, and all resources go to making certain that everyone here and who is in the program and, and, follow, and, and uh, programs sent that will come after this, because I think you all still got, hopefully there's one more, right? So it's going to be really important. You all are literally like laying down the foundation. But that's literally what the rotating apprenticeship would be like. Now, I think I want to answer. You said, what about, so you're having problems with animals. Yeah, deer and coons and rabbits. Coons and Any, Anybody got anything to share with Call a hunter. Call a hunter. Call me. I hunt. Rabbit, squirrel, fish. All him. I like to eat all of the above. Uh, I'd invite me. I'd invite you to call my husband, but I don't know if he want to go out there. But. What about, what about moles? Yeah, good old moles, right? Yeah. Anybody have anybody else having problems with moles? I'm not. <laughs> okay, so let's just talk a little bit now. So for the deer, unfortunately, one of the foolproof, sure proof things is to literally have like a six to eight foot high fence around whatever you don't want them to get into. Um, there are Please. You know what, with the fence, someone told us uh, when you build that fence, build it where the top of it stretches out yeah. because then they would have to jump and then Get over go a little bit. far. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to do that. So you have to bend it out. So they, they, when they jump, they hit the fence, actually. So that's a very costly but effective uh, way to doing it. But again, that may be one of those things that we do inside of RAP-P. Mm -hmm. So okay, got to make some fences. Okay, how do you do fencing? And so we show up at your place and we do the fencing. Okay. Right. You see? Okay. And and uh, in terms of the rabbits and the and the coons, be other than being shot <laughs> by the hunter. Um, there are some folks who are uh, swearing by um, different types of scents, you know, that, yes, um, different kind of urines that they're actually putting around the area that will um, make them 
prohibit them from coming in. To I tried human hair, but human hair didn't work. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to put some sulfur eight on that hair. So. <laughs> I, okay. I know um, with back with the deer and the urine. Uh, I know my husband. He said that male urine around your property, but it has to be like a, a tough buck male, not a fresh male, a young male, even human male, but it has to be an older male. Urine, oh. just just go around your property and pee all around it. Maybe that's what's working at our place. Oh. <laughs> that, and then uh, a dog, a dog, you know, yeah, barking dog. Dogs are good. Dogs are what a lot of people use. Yeah. My friend played a joke on one of his friends. So the deer wouldn't come on his property. He used the Irish Spring barred soap. Oh, yeah. And they wouldn't they wouldn't come. What did, what did he do? Just lay it he, down and hang it. Either you hang can it. you can uh shave, what, it, it, shave it or you can hang it on the ropes. Shave it or hang it. Yeah, hang it on that the smell okay. it, it they they don't like that Irish spring. <laughs> now there are some also people who Take the urine, put them in your old water bottles like this, put it, fill it up with the urine, put holes in it, keep the water bottle capped. But if you put this in the ground, it'll be very smart. So you can always fill it up, put it in the ground, those holes will 